The roots of pop rock lie in the British punk movement of the late 1970s, when bands such as the Sex Pistols, the Stranglers and the Clash became household names in the UK. Although the music reached the US, it remained very much an underground scene. The emergence of post-punk saw bands such as Talking Heads and Devo continue to move away from the established rock scene, combining punk sensibilities with more diverse influences. Before punk, you had progressive rock and everything got long and ponderous and complex. Punk stripped everything back. That kind of nihilism is then followed by post-punk, which is still quite dark and quite angry. And New Wave, which is a lot brighter, has a more poppier sound and is very danceable. As New Wave bands became more commercially successful, the term rock pop was used to describe this new sound. American pop rock was probably best exemplified by bands such as Blondie, who had that sort of punk spirit, but they also were incredibly glossy and they made real pop music. And other American bands such as Go-Go's, Talking Heads too, and a lot of British bands were involved in this as well. The Clash started as real British punks, and then slowly they evolved into a much more pop rock sound. The founding members of the band Cars came from a very different musical background, but also went on to become pioneers of the pop rock movement. Benjamin Orr and Rick Okasek in the early 70s moved to Boston, where they started a band called Milkwood, and that was quite a folky band. In 1976, they moved to form a band called Captain Swing, who were much harder, much more new wave based. They started doing gigs in New York and they started playing Max's Kansas City, which is a very important venue. Management from big bands like Kiss were coming to see them and the message coming back was that they hadn't really defined themselves. They hadn't found the, the right look and the right sound. So Rick Oaksek, I think, you know, slight, slightly brutally sacked a couple of band members who didn't really look the part, and the cars were born. As long as it was deep, yeah. Throughout 1977, they were playing in New England, just doing gigs, and they released a single called Just What I Needed, and it became a hit, and they were signed to Elektra Records. So really, it took less than a year for the band, once they had become the cars, to get big. The early Cars songs were based around Rick Ocasek's guitar, which was really quite unusual. It was very new wave. So you had this mix of smart lyrics, new wave guitar, and poppy songs, and it proved to be irresistible. Their debut self-titled album came out in June 1978, and it was instantly very popular for radio. It had that really bright, commercial, pop rock sound that made it really appealing to quite a mainstream audience. And it went to number 18 in the US and also went to number 29 in the UK. She's the best friend's girl. She's the best friend's girl. had a succession of hit singles, primarily Just What I Needed, which was the song that had originally got them signed, but it also had My Best Friend's Girl, which was the first picture disc released as a single in the United Kingdom too. And it stayed on the American charts for well over a year. By the end of 1978, the Cars' debut album had sold over a million copies in the US. But although the next album, 1979's Candy O, reached number three in the US and number 30 in the UK, it didn't reach the critical acclaim of the band's debut. 
Rolling Stone magazine felt that it was more of the same and the, the magic was lost a little bit. I think what had happened is that the Cars had made an album of great singles in the first album and it's almost they'd used up all this material that had been amassing over the years. The following year saw the release of Panorama. This reached number five in the US. In 1981, Cars bought their own studio, which they called Synchro Sound, and it's there that they recorded their fourth album, Shake It Up. This time they went for a much more poppy commercial sound. The title track, Shake It Up, was Cars' first top ten hit in the US, going to number four. Rick Ogsek released a solo album. After a two-year break, the Cars returned with a fifth album, Heartbeat City. 1984's Heartbeat City is probably the perfect pop rock album. It was an absolutely extraordinary artistic comeback. They brought in the producer Robert John Lang, who'd just been working with Def Leppard on Pyromania, and he really helped them kind of nail down that pop rock sound, something that was really bright and commercial, but still had a bit of edge to it. And it does end up being their most successful album yet. Drive, which went to number three in the US and number four in the UK, was the band's biggest single to date. At Live Aid in 1985, a Cars single Drive was used as the background music for the footage of the Ethiopian famine, and the band played the Philadelphia leg of the charity concert. Who's gonna drive you home After the huge success of Heartbeat City in 1985, the Cars took a break. Rick Ogsek released a solo album, everyone went off to do separate projects, and then they came back in 1987 with Door to Door. And that was successful, but this was very much in the kind of soft metal, very mainstream, very American rock sound. After one final hit, You Are the Girl, the cars split in February 1988. The car's legacy is huge. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2018, but they also showed how it was possible to merge the jaggedness of New Wave with some pretty smart lyrics and a really glossy production, and this is what made them such a strong pop rock act. <laughs> 